The true man is revealed in difficult times. So when trouble comes, think of yourself as a wrestler whom God, like a trainer, has paired with a tough young buck. For what purpose? To turn you into an Olympic class material. To turn you into Olympic class material. But this is going to take some sweat to accomplish. From my perspective, no one's difficulties ever gave him a better test than yours. If you are prepared to make use of them the way a wrestler makes use of an opponent in peak condition. Oh my goodness, did you move this guy? We gotta put Mr. Gorgeous over here so you guys can see it. Let's stick him up there, Mr. Gorgeous. All right, that, back to the uh, peak condition. What would have become of Hercules, do you think, if there had been no lion, hydra, stag, or boar, and no savage criminals to get the world, to rid the world of? What would he have done in the absence of such challenges? Obviously, he would have just rolled over in bed and gone back to sleep like an LC. So by snoring his life away in luxury and comfort, he never would have developed into the mighty Hercules. And even if he had, what good would it have done him? Would What would have been the use of those arms, that physique, that noble soul, without crisis or conditions to stir him into action? Listen to how he's describing the body. Sounds like odds of male, right? What would have happened to Hercules? Nothing would have happened to Hercules. That's a lesson. Seek the challenge. It births the heroes. Guys, this is the book review for Epictetus' the Discord, the Discourses of Epictetus by Epictetus and his study, his, uh, his student, his famous student who took the uh, notes of these. This is a series of lectures. They took the notes. Orion, uh, how's it going, guys? How's it mail? BigRia.com, the number one channel for Indiana Real Estate, the uh, largest media company in the Midwest for real estate, all kinds of really cool stuff. Thank you so much, guys, for making that happen. It's all because of you. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. These are the one sentence book reviews, the one page book reviews, uh, one page roughly, um, where we take the best ideas. This, guys, have asked so many people asked me about this. So I did this study. Stoicism is basically the, the three kind of fathers of Stoicism. Seneca, who basically was a billionaire, he was the mentor to uh, an advisor to Nero. I did a book review on Seneca. I haven't one done, done one on Marcus Aurelius, but you guys, a few of you have said, you know, you came here for real estate stuff or business building stuff and you got into this Stoicism or it started to like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. We did a book review on uh, the Nicomachean ethics. Uh, it was pretty, it's pretty heavy stuff that we did that we went over, but we went over that stuff. Stoicism, this is going to be, this is, we're going to do the book review on Epictetus. Next, we'll do Marcus Aurelius. And those are the main three. If you want to understand Stoicism, go through this, go through our book review on Seneca and go through the book review on Marcus Aurelius's meditations. And I'll give you a good idea. It's a belief system focused on virtue, unattachment, anti-materialism, reason, wisdom, and inner game, basically working on yourself. Guys, the biggest secret I've learned in my life, all my studies, all the stuff we've done, all the progress, all the stuff we did, we're building the world's largest organization, a special needs business owners, all kinds of cool stuff. 30K a month, passive income, how to do it, go to bigrea.com, all over all this stuff. I appreciate you guys so much. And I, to show my appreciation, we go over classes like this, book reviews like this, and other uh, uh, other great uh, lessons and things like that that you can use to create passive income, create generational wealth. Remember, all generational wealth is passive income reinvested. So you got to create passive income. But this idea of how do you how do you do this? How do you, the biggest secret I've learned is you've got to use your, it's your frequency of thinking and you've got to tap into what Socrates called uh, the great knowledge. Uh, Plato called the idea, the hope. Uh, Aristotle called the great virtue. Uh, da Vinci called it the sky. Steve Jobs called it the RDF, the, R the reality distortion field. Uh, Tesla called it the source. Everyone talks about the same thing. How do you tap into what we call the universe? Any religious person calls it God, where you have endless energy, you have nothing but possibility, opportunity, optimism, and you have at the very height of your existence, you are filled with love and gratitude. The opposite is resentment. When you have low frequency thinking, dog shit thinking, how do you create that? Stoicism is really the belief system about that. Epictetus, we've talked about him before. He was a slave who taught himself to read. Together with Seneca and Aurel uh, Marcus Aurelius, they led the, Sto the movement of Stoicism. They've basically founded it. And this is how living your life bravely based on Stoic principles can dramatically improve the quality of life and fulfillment. I know it sounds kind of vague, man. This is like heavy, heavy stuff. These are some of the best ideas, the most influential ideas. It's like I tell kids all the time, even if you're not religious, you should at least study religion so you understand these ideas that have influenced so many people. Even if you're not into these ideas, even if you don't you don't find them as brilliant, if you're in a place in your life where you don't receive it with the brilliance that it can be received with, you should still study these. These are the most influential, the most viral, the most the oldest, some of the oldest ideas that have ever that have ever been introduced to mankind. So you should at least study them, at least have some passing familiarity with them, right? Okay, so uh, that was the first lesson. A lesson, uh, next lesson, your reaction can make everything quote unquote good. Material things per se are indifferent, but what the use we make of them is not indifferent. The question then, remember he has so many great lines. These are like, you should really go through this stuff and just let it wash over you for a second. He said, if you want to have a beautiful life, you must have beautiful thoughts. That was one of his quotes. Epictetus really had some had some brilliance here. He was really an awesome male of his time. The question then is how to strike a balance between a common composed attitude on the one hand and a conscientious, a conscientious outlook that is neither slack nor careless on the other. Model yourself on card players. The chips don't matter and the cards don't matter. Remember, it's the archer, not the arrow. How can I know what the deal will be? But making careful and skillful use of the deal, whatever happens. Remember, things work out the best for people who make the best of the way things work out. That's where my responsibility begins. So in life, our first job is this, to divide and distinguish things into two categories. Externals I cannot control, but the choices I make with regard to them that I do control. Where, where will I find good and bad in me? My choices don't ever speak good or bad, advantage or harm, and so on, of anything that is not your responsibility. This idea of constantly focusing 
focusing on, we have this, um, if you guys control where Mr. Gorgeous is going, am I even on the screen right now? Should I move more? I, I wasn't controlling that. You were. All right. This, uh, this is what we talk about constantly, especially with our heroes that have gone, you know, people, we have people who are dealing with, you know, end of the life stuff, getting terminal illness and stuff. This ultimately what matters more than anything else. It's your reaction to what happens and making sure when you have faith, when you know that everything is happening for you, not to you, that the universe is actually working for you. Everything's working in your favor. As soon as you have boldness, as soon as you take action, that Emerson called that symphony of events happen in your favor. And when you have that belief, that thinking going into it, you immediately create it. You create the very favors, the very favorable odds that you that you are that you are planning on seeing through manifestation, law of attraction, that stuff. But also through just that we can measure this with our frequency. We talk about this all the time. It's amazing. Your field, you attract your thoughts, attract other thoughts like them. But that field, this is what we're all our work is on right now. How strong is that field? Because we know it's there. It attracts things to you. The only question is how big is it and how strong is it? But ultimately, getting your thoughts on track, man, it brings things, it forces the universe to bend to your will. Lesson, practice, practice, and prove and practice. If you didn't learn these things in order to demonstrate them in practice, what did you learn them for? He kind of lectures, he kind of goes after some of his students, makes fun of them. I suppose there might be some of you who are sitting there losing patience and thinking, why don't I get to face the kind of challenge he did? I'm going old in a corner. I could be winning a crown Olympia, but when, when will I be nominated for a similar trial? This is the attitude that all LCs have, but this is the attitude that all you should, that you should all adopt. Like you should want to have challenges, but the attitude that the LC has is how come I don't have something like that? And they just stay in this mode. He talks about I would, the, the idea that people think that when they see somebody have something, they want the thing. They don't want the challenge. That the LC thinking is, oh, I just want the stuff he has, but I didn't want the challenge. The badass thinking is, hey, I want the challenge, that trial that he had. You should all adopt this thinking. There are gladiators at Rome who get frustrated if they're not called out and matched with an opponent, all the while begging God and their own supervisors to be allowed to do battle one-on-one. -on -one. None of you here shows anything like that. Same metal. He's kind of goes after, makes fun of his students, this, which is why I like to escape to Rome to see my favorite wrestler in action, for he at least puts policy into practice, basically saying they, you know, they want to fight. You should want to fight. You should want to sharpen your blade. Nothing important comes into being overnight. Even grapes or figs need time to ripen. If you say that you want a fig now, I will tell you to be patient. First, you must allow the tree to flower, then put forth fruit. Then you have to wait until the fruit is ripe. So if the fruit of a fig tree is not brought to maturity instantly or in an hour, how do you expect the human mind to come to fruition so quickly and easily? Don't expect it. Don't expect it even if I were to personally tell you that it is possible. Don't believe anyone who says it's possible. This constant idea of re refining your brain, refining your thinking, understanding that everything that outside is a result of what you have internally. Fix the internal, you know, fix the external. That's constantly what Epictetus was talking about. Remember, he was a slave who taught himself to read. And Seneca was kind of the opposite. He was a billionaire, but both these guys tapped into the same kind of same brilliance and had the same following. Decide, lesson here, decide to use your time better. Freedom is not achieved by satisfying desire, but by eliminating this line right here. All I do is take the best lines as I'm reading them. It's just a process. I go through the book like two or three times to get the to get these, put these together. But these are the best ideas I have from it. This is one of the best ideas in the entire book. Freedom is not achieved by satisfying desire, but by eliminating it. This is also, we talk about addiction. If you still want that stuff, you haven't solved your addiction. Assure yourself of this by expanding, by expending as much effort on these new ambitions as you did on the elusive goals. Work day and night to attain a liberated frame of mind. When you get angry, you should know that you aren't guilty of an isolated lapse. You've encouraged a trend and thrown fuel on the fire. It is inevitable that continuous behavior of any one kind is going to instill new habits and tendencies while steadily confirming old ones. Brilliant. This is my ambition. I aspire to make you proof against force, obstruction, and disappointment, free, content, and happy with your attention fixed on God and every matter great and small. We should discipline ourselves in small things and from there progress to do things of greater value. If you have a headache, practice not cursing. Don't curse every time you have an earache. And I'm not saying that you can't complain, only don't complain with your whole being. If your servant is slow to bring you a band-aid, don't roll around and yell, everybody hates me. Who wouldn't hate such a person? I, we talk about this all the time. Just take the words you're saying, the things you have. Whenever the LC talks, always ask yourself, if you were to say that, I always we play the LC game. Whenever someone starts LC stuff, I'll say, I'll be you and you be me. Whenever I do that, it's never a good thing, right? And whenever I'm doing that, and every single time the person's like, oh my gosh, when they hear themselves talk, like who wouldn't hate you? Who would who would want to be around you? Every time you do LC stuff, every time you're a dickhead, every time you have dog shit thinking, you are sending a bat signal to everybody around you and not around you that, hey, LCs, you come around me, you're going to feel right at home. Walk upright and free, trusting in the strength of your moral convictions, not the strength of your body. Like an athlete, you weren't meant to be invincible by brute force, like a pack animal. You are invincible if nothing outside will disconcert you. It's about being in the right place internally. Lesson, be successful and attract the successful. Step forward and make use of what you've learned. Isn't it more logical chopping that is needed? Our stoic texts are full of that. L isn't it more logic chopping that is needed? Our, 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 our stoic texts are full of that. What we need now are people applying their learning and bear witness to their learning in their actions. Please be the one to take on this character. I am tired of my teachers of invoking examples from the past. I want to be able to hold up an example from, an old, hold up an example from time to time. He's telling his students, go out there and be the stories, be the success stories. One of the things I've taken from stoicism is that these guys don't ever brag about what they've done. Whenever they talk about
about people. They talk about what others have done. It's one of the things I've really incorporated because I brag constantly, but I'm always bragging about what other people are doing with our stuff, not what I'm doing and never about how much money I'm making. And this is one of the best ways to say that you can always hold up examples of people. Your ideas are only as good as the people who are executing them, right? That's the way all of us should be judged. Any idea should be judged on people who, if they internalize that idea, what results they see. It is inevitable that if you enter relations with people on a regular basis, either for conversation, dining, or simple friendship, that you will grow to be like them, unless you can get them to emulate you. Place an extinguished, place an extinguished piece of coal next to a live one, and either it will cause the other one to die out, or the live one will make it reignite. Since it is, since a lot is at stake, you should be careful about fraternizing with non-philosophers in these contexts. Remember that if you consort with someone covered in dirt, you can hardly avoid getting a little grimy yourself. This last paragraph is like the most important thing. The LC attracts the LC. Did you move Mr. Gorgeous? I don't know where he was out there. But this is the same thing. Who, you, who you're around, you're going to become. Whenever people hang around somebody dumb, you ever hang out with them a couple of weeks and they're not so dumb anymore, right? They didn't get smarter. Everything you have, we're always, every every group of people has a an immune system. I talk about this. If you get around people who run every day and you don't run every day, their immune, immune system will kick you out. Also, now one of two things will happen. You'll either bring them down to your level where they don't run every day or they will bring you, they, they'll 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 somehow find a way to get rid of you in that group. Every group, every, every, every network, every system has an immune system. You also have one. If you're used to dog shit thinking, anytime somebody introduces something new or introduces something that's outside of that field, you will reject it. Your immune system, your LC immune system will say, you know what? I don't want, I don't want to have anything to do with this. And you will actually, you know, if you're, if you believe nothing but awful things about the world and awful things about people, stories like that, evidence like that will find you. It will seek you. And this is the most important part of frequency of thinking and the thought frequency is the effect, the more, the, the effect not only it has on you, but it has the effect on other people and other things. You see based on the lens that you're looking through, man, I love this stuff. I've read this stuff quite a bit. I've gone through this. We're going to do the Microsoft Release one next. That is a book review of the Discourse of Epictetus. BigRio.com. Go there now. I love you. <laughs>